What's up everybody on the Mangus? You are awesome, but today we're going to take a close look at Grux, or Uruk in Overprime's case. We'll compare how he was implemented in Predecessor, Fault, and Overprime to see who wore him better. Unlike the similar Gideon video I did, I will not be giving them star ratings because, well, that just pisses people off, doesn't it? I'm just going to show you the differences and you can decide if they suck or not. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and hit that like button and be sure to subscribe for more. Now let's get into these abilities, starting of course with the basic attack. All three games did a great job with the basic attack animations. In Predecessor, you get the cock back into the second sweep when chaining attacks together. The real impressive thing here is the sound effects. There is a very discernible whoosh before the thwomp. You also have a bit of visual splash on the point of impact. Overprime sound effects are worse in my opinion with an odd metallic sound. However, they have better visual splash with sparks flying in the direction of the sweep, and they included some slight hit stop to make the overall attack feel a bit more hearty and satisfying. Fault recently adjusted Grux's basic attacks to make them flow together more smoothlier. You get a bit of visual splash on point of impact, and while the, the basics have a nice chunky hit sound, it's lacking that whoosh at the initial swing. Grux's Q is the old smash and grab. All three games kept this, with Fault switching things up slightly to make your reticle elongate the longer you hold the button. Smash and grab was pretty straightforward in Predecessor. Your targeting was consistent, it pulled everything towards you, and the sound effects was, it was pretty good. I think the animation matches the pull pretty well here. There is a nice visual effect of uh, rolling dust at the end of the cone. The, the main note of interest is that the point of origin is a semicircle around Grox instead of the point of a triangle, making this a bit more intuitive to land at close range. Overprime included more of a wind up with the ability. This made it harder to hit, however, I kinda like the theatrics. The sound effect is very earthy, for lack of a better word. They have some visual sparks that draw in from the edge of the ability to indicate the pull, which is, it's pretty cool. Since Smash and Grab works a bit different in Fault, the targeting indicator also works different. It elongates the longer you hold the ability with the highlighted area showing you actual pull range and the darker area that shows potential pull range. The animation is completely dependent on how long you hold the ability, but is executed quickly once you release. The sound effect is both chunky and natural. Slain. And the visual effects also kick up some dust. Grux's original Paragon E was Stampede. This was a charge through targets. They eventually replaced this with a knockup. Predecessor combined the two by giving you a short range charge into a knockup. The animation is nice as you wind up the knockup while moving forward. The sound effects are good with another swoosh and thud like they did with his basic attacks. Visually, you get a bit of an orange Nike swoosh that accompanies the knockup. Overprime went with a straight up damaging dash. The animation shows the knockup at the end, but it doesn't actually include any crowd control components. He does fold his clubs back like he's skiing, which is an animation that I've always enjoyed. Sound effects are nice with a quick thumping of his hooves. Can we angry about his butt? Visual effects are really well done with sparks flying from his feet, an orange aura in front of him, and some edge of screen glow. Fault also baked the knock up into the charge. The animation is the old ski poles again into the Sharyuken. The sound effect includes both the hoof stomping and the thump of the knock up. Visually, you have some flash coming off his feet from the charge and then the Nike swoosh of orange on the uppercut. Another classic that is carried on is Grux's right click, double pain. You perform a quick double chop with your clubs. In Predecessor, this functions exactly like it did in Paragon. You chop people, they bleed. The sound effect is well done. The visual effect is orange trails from your weapon and you get the hit flash like you, like you do when you land a basic. A simple yet effective ability. 
Over Prime seems to have done away with the bleed portion of this ability. You get the initial damage, and that's it. Sound effect is okay, even if it's very metallic, but his clubs do look metallic in Over Prime. I guess that's why they made the his hits sound metallic, I guess? I don't know. I'm coming in, boys. The visual effect is rolling flames moving away from your clubs, which is very cool. In Fault, you get the bleed damage and you apply trauma for 4 seconds, which reduces the target's healing. The sound effect is well done with a nice grux grunt. Visual effects are crescents of orange trails from the weapons. Grux's Paragon Ultimate was a club smash above his head that would apply a micro sun for interrupts and increase his damage output for a brief time. Predecessor's version is very similar to old school Paragon. You get the stun, you get attack speed, and interestingly, your basic attacks steal physical power from your target. Sound effect is good with a clashing noise and the shout of Warlord from Grux. Oh, this dude really couldn't let me get them stacks! Visual effects include a flash upon activation and enhanced light streaks on your basics. Overprime's version is just like Paragon's. You stun the target and gain physical power for a short period of time. The sound effect is pretty cool with the initial clash into a, a horn playing in the distance, which is like, I don't know, that's kind of cool. Visually, you get a bright flash and some sparks on the stun, extra light streaks on your basics while it's active, and an orange glow on the bottom of your screen to help indicate the duration. Fault's ultimate works a bit different. You simply roar, which makes you unstoppable and gives you stacks of crushing blows. Crushing blows is Grux's passive, and it basically gives you extra true damage on hit. So instead of a stun, you get stun immunity. Sound effect for this is pretty a pretty simple roar, Visually, you get light streaks on the weapons and a decaying circle around your reticle that serves as an indicator for the ultimate's duration. Now let's go through basic movement around the map. Now when I did the Gideon comparison, Predecessor had done an insanely good job with basic character movement. However, I don't see the same attention to detail with Grux. I'm assuming it's because Grux is a fairly recent addition to the roster and they, they just haven't had time to doll him up yet. There's nothing really wrong with his movement here, it just isn't as good as Gideon's was. Overprime of course has travel mode, so most of your map rotations are done in that animation. Again, nothing particularly good or bad here, but it's cool to see travel mode. Fault is about the same as everyone else in this category, nothing glaringly wrong, but nothing breathtakingly well done either. And that's it. I can't really compare skins because no one has done more than a recolor for Grux. I would talk about the passives, but I honestly can't remember what his passive was in Predecessor, and I had to look it up for Fault because I just I just never noticed that shit. I would look it up for Predecessor, but they don't have their hero kits on their website like like Fault and Overprime do. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not going to do ratings this time. I just want to present all the differences and let you decide which one you prefer. Let me know in the comments who you think did a better job of implementing Grox, but for now, this is the Mangoose signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangoose! Special shout out to channel members, iBloodHunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, Raven, and Blastoise King.